Kevin of the vegan hip hop movement here with none other than J Live. Peace. Tell us about your new experience with, with food, your new relationship. Well, um, last year about this time, actually uh, a year ago today, um, I'd been pretty much doing different things to try to get in shape, uh, various workout routines, various diet regimens, you know, and I'd always, you know, regardless of you know, fitness and all of that. I've been, you know, off and on between vegetarian, pescatarian, chicken fishitarian, just, you know, personal preference. And, you know, it so happened at the time I was uh, I was chicken fishitarian and doing these, you know, various routines. And I, I always called myself like the rap Oprah, you know, with the weight. And I would, I would go up, and it would go down, and it would come up a little, and then go down and come up a little, you know what I'm saying? Some different things. So, looking into it, I saw that movie, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, mm -hmm. and, you know, with Joe Cross, and then, you know, the various people that he came across and different things, and I don't know if I related to, to them as much to what he was trying to do, you know, I didn't have any condition like that, but it was fascinating, you know, that he was able to fast just off of juice for that long, and it was like, all right, you know, I always had in the back of my mind, I, right, you know, I'm gonna try that someday, and... You know, it came about, it was like, all right, well, why not try it now? So I set myself up, you know, got a little juicer. I was looking for the Breville, but I ended up with a little Cuisinart, John. And just went through the motions, figured, all right, let me see see how it goes for a few days. Because, you know, I, I fasted, you know, I do like a water fast or a raw fast, but nothing that extensive for that long. And I'd never really, you know, juiced my own fruits and vegetables before like that. You know, I would hit up, you know, some of the juice spots in Harlem or BK. Mm. But, uh, and then, you know, return to eating out here. Mm -hmm. I used to live across the street from there. And um, not so much return to eating, but Arden's Garden. Okay. It's a good spot. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I figured, all right, let me give it a try. So, you know, a few days in, you know, according to the movie and according to research, I've done a lot of research online beforehand. And they were saying that, you know, for whatever reason, you know, whether it be sugar withdrawal or what have you, you're, gonna, you're likely to experience some nausea, some headaches, some... some irritability, mm -hmm. but I think my diet was such that I minimized the side effects because it's not like I wasn't eating right before, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, mean, I always say this is like the bread basket, you know, mm -hmm. I got an ill sweet tooth, mm -hmm. but you know, so happened I was eating right before the fast. So, you know, a few days turned into, all right, let me see about five, let me see about ten, you know, and ten days in, you sort of realize, okay, I'm not, you know, lacking for energy. You know, I wasn't working out at all because, you know, the research said, I right, if you're going to do a juice fast, you know, don't do any strenuous exercises. And, you know, another another trick that I figured was go to sleep early at the beginning, you know what I mean? So, you know, I would hit, I would hit the bed at like 8, 9 o'clock, you know, wake up, 3, go back to sleep. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just give myself as much rest as possible, little siestas and whatnot, kind of mm. like pushing the fast forward button, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, 10 days in, I'm like, all right, well, this is not as crazy as it seemed at first. Let me just keep going. So 10 turned into 30, 30 turned into 60. I ended up doing a whole 60 days. Wow. So, you know, from April 17th to June 15th, you know, I lost, you know, at the end of the day, about 60 pounds in 60 days. Wow. And, you know, skin cleared up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was bad, you know, I was up, I was like, you know, pushing 300 at the time. Mm. So, by the end, you know, I had sleep apnea, mm -hmm. you know, I used to scare my ex-girl to death, mm -hmm. she'd wake up like, yo, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had, uh, I've been dealing with, with high blood pressure for a long time, mm -hmm. um, you know, and just overall sluggishness from, from carrying all that extra weight. Mm -hmm. You know, not like I'm, you know, slim good now or something, but it's night and day, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So... You know, after all of that, and it was funny because, you know, one of the one of the supers in my building was fixing my garbage disposal because, um, you know, all of that juicing. Okay. <laughs> I was wearing it out. <laughs> but, um, you know, me and him got to building, and he was like, yeah, you know, because humans weren't necessarily made to, to, to eat meat. You know I mean? We can, but mm -hmm. if you look at, our, you know, structure versus function, <laughs> and it got me to thinking, you know, so I looked it up a little bit more, did a little research. And I guess the whole theory that if you line up humans with omnivores, carnivores, and herbivores, 
you know, as far as anatomy goes, as far as alkaline versus acid, as far as, you know, the length of the digestive system and things of that nature, mm -hmm. we are, you know, we have a lot more in common with herbivores. Mm -hmm. So that struck me, you know, that, that kind of stuck with me for a minute. And, um, you know, from my experience working out, you know, going back to being a chicken fishitarian, primarily to make sure I got the protein that I needed, it was like, all right, well, what, how do, how do, how do people, you know, maneuver that? So, looking into it even more, um, I'd come across a YouTube channel called The Vegan Assassin. Mm. This dude in Miami, who actually now has a, a cafe called Choices, a real, real cool restaurant, he does all kinds of stuff. Mm. But he had these comical, you know, real funny, really, really, really informative kind of cooking sessions in his crib mm -hmm. about, you know, what vegans do to get their protein, because the dude was like a, you know, fitness junkie, like a gym rat, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So he's talking about, I right, this is what I do, this, 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 and that, and I'm, so I'm learning all kinds of stuff about, you know, various various foods and, and, and supplements and natural things that I had no idea about before, mm. from from flax to hemp to you know, chia seeds to maca powder, to goji berries, you know, all the various quote-unquote superfoods. Right, right. And, um, you know, so just getting into that, it was like, okay, so if I can get my protein from here, 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 and here, and these things already have the natural kind of, you know, carbs to them, and then just, you know, Reading this book, um, I'm still reading now, called In Defense of Food. I can't remember the author's name, but he was breaking down how basically a while back the FDA wanted to just come out and say, all right, eat less meat and less dairy. But, you know, various industries, there was such a backlash that they, what they ended up doing to compromise was breaking things down to the actual nutrients. Mm. You know, like, you know, consume less saturated fat, less this, less that, instead of just coming out and saying the names of the foods or the mm. food types. Mm -hmm. So, you know, according to the book, and the books, you know, the book contends that that's what sort of brought on this whole age of nutritionism where mm. rather than just saying, I, you know, eating an apple is good for you because of X, Y, and Z, they want to break down what well, apple has fiber mm. and, and certain kinds of sugars and things of that nature and just kind of, you know, really delve into the science and the chemistry of it. Mm -hmm. When at the end of the day, a lot of you know various cultures eat what they eat culturally, and just you know be as fit as they are. You know mm -hmm. whether you're talking about the French and their consumption of cheese and bread, but not necessarily feeling the effects, um, or just you know various indigenous indigenous uh, peoples that 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 have you know carnivorous diets, but because they're they're, they're, they're hunting and gathering, they're doing it their own way, and they're, they're expending enough energy to where it makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so just, you know, for whatever, you know, just, just throughout the process of my, my, you know, my own journey and my own findings, you know, anecdotal evidence mm -hmm. from, my, from my experience, you know, I feel, and I was, I was looking for a word with a word at the time, and the word I came up with was unencumbered, you know what I mean? Mm. Because if, if it seems like, all right, meat's going to take that much longer to digest in your mm. system, you know, then combine that with the fact that you can get what you need elsewhere, mm -hmm. you know, why bother? Right, right. <laughs> so that's that's sort of where I've been, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, chicken still smells great. <laughs> <laughs> I've never really been a cheese eater. Mm -hmm. um, even growing up, you know, like, I always, I never liked pizza, mm. which, was, which made me a weird kid mm -hmm. uh, and a weird adult, as it were, <laughs> and a weird father. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, so, like, as far as... You know, soy cheese or, or rice cheese or diet, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I see it, but it's not really my thing. Mm -hmm. um, when I went vegetarian back in college, I used to mess with, you know, all kinds of morning star stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my, my brother used to put, you know, the patties in a toaster, mess up the toaster. <laughs> oh, <stuff>. damn. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, and I, I still I still mess around with, with a couple things, but I'm trying to stay away from soy just because... Mm -hmm. From, from what I've studied and, and observed, I just don't know enough about it to really feel confident to put mm. it in my system like that. Uh, but, you know, I say all that to say I'm not really looking to substitute me. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm looking for, like, you know, like, like chick nuggets or whatever. whatever right, right. You know, like, I like Izuki burgers. I like, uh, like a black bean burger. Mm. I tear it up. Yeah, those are nice. But I'm not really messing with, you know, like, soy burgers and things of that. Yeah. Nature, you know, the wheat, wheat and all that. And actually... I put on some of the weight 
uh, after the fact mm. because although I was like straight vegan and you know feeling unencumbered and you know more regular as, as it were you know mm-hmm. without grossing y'all out mm-hmm. um, <laughs> you know like I said this is this is pretty much the bread basket and the sweet tooth mm-hmm. so you know like what, what they say in uh, Jurassic Park you know nature finds a way <laughs> <laughs> so I pretty much become an expert as far as like all of the things that I made before, you know, from, from the pancakes to the waffles mm-hmm. to the cookies to muffins to the cupcakes to the birthday cakes to whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. you know, figuring out, okay, you know, where it calls for an egg, you can use applesauce, you can use banana if you're making French toast, you can, you know, take a tablespoon of flax and throw it in three tablespoons of warm water, let it sit for a minute, and it's basically the same as an egg, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, still using, like, the best ingredients, yeah. you know, messing with, like, coconut oil, things of that nature. Just, uh, just really stepping my game up as far as what I'm putting into my body, but still, you know, at the end of the day, too much sweets. Mm. You know, not processed sugar, but you know, agave is still sweet. You mm-hmm. know what I'm Honey is still sweet. Um, syrup, you know, maple syrup is still sweet. So you, you still got to curb that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a process. Yeah, you definitely. Know, your phases and whatnot. But as far as being vegan, you know, it's been a year now. You know what I mean? Like. I was never really on no ham or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. Y'all catch me with a, with a grilled chicken sandwich a few years from now. You say, ah, they lie. <laughs> you know, as far as I can tell, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's pretty much just been working. Word. So, yeah, it seems to. Yeah. Definitely. Because I, I first saw you in London in like the late 90s or whatever. Oh, yeah. And, and I, I see a, a crazy transformation. <laughs> you know, I see it in you and I have definitely see it in myself mm-hmm. as well. I've been vegan now for eight years. So, nice. so yeah, it's, it's been good to me for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm not like... You know, and it's wild too because the more you research, you know, I've come to realize a lot of people are vegan primarily because of animal rights mm-hmm. or because of the way the farm industry is set up. Mm-hmm. You know, which I, I was always leery of and always, you know, concerned with. Mm-hmm. But my primary motivation was self-preservation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying this mm-hmm. is not a selfless thing. This is not J Live saving the animals. This is more, mm-hmm. you know, doing right by me. Yeah. And in turn. You know, if I get to go ahead and take my business from things that hmm. are inherently corrupt and immoral, mm-hmm. so be it. You know, Word. there's more power to it. You know what I mean? So, that's that's pretty much where it's at. Right? Yeah, I feel you. My kids, I don't really impose it on my kids. I do give them a, a gang of variety now. Mm. You know, a lot less meat, you know, a lot more various beans. But, um, you know, all of the things that they enjoy, I've just found ways to do it my way. Nice, and, nice. you know, sometimes they'll be like, they try to treat it like a four-letter word and be like, is this vegan? <laughs> like, try it. Like, Ooh. Like, yeah, it is. Oh, right. Right. okay. <laughs> nice, nice. So, you know, it's been, it's been a process. But, uh... That's, that's pretty much my story. Word, because I was going to ask you about that, because I see that T-shirt you have on. I'm curious, like, the significance behind it. Like, oh, the T-shirt is just, um, there's a company out of uh, San Diego, clothing company, um, that just lays me with the shirt. I just like it. It's like, oh, word. <laughs> okay. Because, I mean, you, like, the triggers, like, you were talking about being a father, so you, you have, there's a child on your shirt, of course. Oh, yeah, then it made me think of, um... Bag of 40s. <laughs> it made me think of the the video. Have you seen Food Fight? The one is uh, Earth Amplified and Stick Man of Dead Prez. No, no. Like, cause it yeah, it addresses like the high rates of obesity and oh, just yeah. like the sugar yeah, diets trip, that many man. youth are on and that's a trip. That's yeah. A trip. And it's like you know you talk to it just strikes me like this whole separation between the medical industry <laughs> and the food industry to where you know like even in hospitals. <laughs> They give you crap food. Right. They're not so much worried about what you're getting in your system. They just want to treat it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, the physician healed thyself or let that food be thy medicine, mm-hmm. things of that nature. That they just, it's almost like they're mutually exclusive. Absolutely. You know, talk about. Because, you know, I'm like independent artist and stuff. You know? I'm not trying to really raise up any doctor bills or anything. Mm-hmm. Like that. Mm-hmm. So, the fact that I was able to correct so many different aspects of my health through my diet, mm-hmm. you know, I'm like, could be a case study in that now. Word. Um, and then just the fact that you, know, you talk about the lack of knowledge or the skepticism with regards to eating different foods or, or trying different things as far as how they will actually affect your health. Mm-hmm. You know, that tastes great. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. not like, you know, everything don't taste like apple cider vinegar. <laughs> <You know laughs> exactly, <what I'm> <laughs> exactly. There's some good stuff out there. Right, so, right. So, uh, 
Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's a trip. It's a trip. It's Definitely. So I'm curious because you said it was fat, sick, and nearly tired. Like that inspired fat you, sick right? And nearly dead. Yeah. Nearly dead, rather. Uh -huh. um, so, like, do you have like a, a relationship to that video in the sense of like you were inspired to make that transition in your in your life? Like you said, you don't impose it on your children, but like because you're an artist and you're traveling, mm -hmm. do you like connect and build with folks? And well, I can and they, say, like, just from just being me mm -hmm. and you know doing shows and from just being online as much as I am and, and you know, being a foodie to a degree mm. between Instagram and Facebook and, and Tumblr, you know, all real J Live by the way. Mm. R E A L J L I B you know that. Um <laughs> you know, you, you come across people, you talk to people, you build with people and they're like, What are you doing? And you tell them or you post a picture of something that looks banging and they're like, you know, how'd you make that? And you tell them. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've inspired, you know, I've inspired some cats. Word. I mean, I know, you know a lot of ladies I know is like, you know, I'm trying this for a time. I'm, I'm juicing now. You know, a lot of fellas I know are you know, juicing more. They're doing different things. Mm -hmm. So, and then, you know, like, cats like Da Vinci from Soliloquist and Sounds mm -hmm. doing his thing. You know, friends of mine like my man Jeremiah out in Australia. John Robinson, when I was on my Juice Fast, about halfway in, he, he ended up... Um, juicing for 30 days and then going raw for 30 days and oh, works. Of weight, you know what I'm saying? Dope. So it's like, it's weird, you know, a lot of cats will come back to you like, yeah, yeah, you were the spark, you know, or, you know, I was inspired by you, or keep doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. and it feels great, you know, it's, 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 uh, damn near a responsibility to maintain and keep going. Definitely. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Serious. You can't turn around and, and, and look like three years ago and be like, oh, what happened? Mm -hmm. Bless his heart. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, so I say... It, it, it's definitely, you know, my voice has been heard just naturally, mm -hmm. you know, without jumping on a soapbox yeah, or anything yeah. like that, you know, and, and, you know, the same as being a five percenter, people hear that in my music, mm -hmm. you know, I suppose people start to hear this in my music too. Mm. So do you have messages within your music that, that speak to your diet? To a degree, yeah. to a degree, I mean, I'm not, uh, there's a couple concepts for like songs, but, you know, just, just from various freestyles and lines, you'll hear certain things. Oh, word. Uh, that's, I'd say, you know, like like I said, I'm not jumping on the soapbox yeah. or anything like that. I'm just basically, you know, you know, some some artists are characters or assigned characters or play a role mm -hmm. um, because they're entertaining in that matter. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a poet than an entertainer, mm -hmm. and I entertain, but you know, my my poetry comes from a source of within myself and just just uh, expressing and being a creative outlet for who I am and what I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, in that regard, if I'm dealing with it, you're going to hear about it. You know Word. What yeah, so, yeah. And so you referenced the Michael Pollan book. I believe that's the author yeah, of the book yeah, you yeah, referenced. Yeah, the sense of food. yeah, so do you have any other, like, recommendations, resources, uh, documentaries, um, uh, books, whatever for Fast folks? Fast Food Nation is a great book. Um, I'm running now. There's a book called uh, The Elements of Effort. It's kind of like strunk, like a play on Strunk White's Elements of Style, mm. but it's just a runner's kind of a journal about various things that he goes through. I would recommend that. I mean, there's, there's a ton of stuff. Honestly, I, I really, I get a lot of stuff online from mm. Facebook and Tumblr and mm -hmm. just, you know, like my bookmarks, I got mm. a whole folder full of recipes that I just, you know, I see it, I grab it, I try it. You know, mm -hmm. I live right down the block from you know, the Cal Farmers Market. Word. So, you know, I mastered the whole economics of eating healthy between Whole Foods and their crazy prices and no Trader doubt. Joe's and, you know, it's the Seven Onda and Box Park Rosa and, mm. you know, what to get from where, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, you know, plus this whole Monsanto stuff and what grocers and what companies are still, you know, advocating that. Mm -hmm. you, know, I, you know, you hardly catch me in a regular grocery store now. Word, word. You know, so, yeah, I mean, it's... it's People tell people ask me all the time, like you know, what what one one particular source to go to. Like mm -hmm. said, man, just take it all in. Yeah, know? definitely. And, and, and you know, put things against each other. You know what I mean? Right, right. Some people are like, all right, what's what's the best sweetness? Some people will say agave. Some people will say stevia. Some people will say maple syrup. Mm -hmm. Some people will just say, you know, whatever. Just juice your fruit. Throw that. Dates in. or whatever. Yeah. Dates. Dates yeah. are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Word. So you, you spoke to that too, like just how you figured out, like you kind of have to juggle between different 
like spots where you get your food oh, from. Yeah. And so people have this impression that that veganism is expensive. Can it you? Can like, be, yeah. If, you're not, if you don't shop around, like if I were to, be, you know, not to dime cats out, but you know, if I got my 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 chia seeds from anywhere other than the farmers market, mm -hmm. they'd be you know robbing me blind. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you'll go to a spot and it'll be, you know, a real cool package and, and you know all of the benefits on the on the label and everything and. Like yeah, yeah, eight dollars. Mm. I'm like, it's like get that for two dollars. Yeah. You know, and it just says you know Peruvian cheese seeds in, in a little that little ass jar. You know right, what I'm exactly. <laughs> I'm like, come on, you know where you getting your cacao from or cacao or whatever you want to pronounce mm -hmm. it. Um, and it's a, yeah, you gotta shop around, but that's like anything. Exactly, you know? exactly. If you want to be, you know, uh, overzealous sucker, then you know by all means they'll take your money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm curious what what it's like for you when you're traveling, when you're on the road. Like, do you um, find it? Easy? Do you find it challenging? Well, what? Honestly, I can either go raw hmm. or I can juice. But you know, so, do you take your juicer with you when you're traveling? I don't have a big one like that. That I like a little one like that that I take with me. Mm -hmm. But you know, you can find spots. You know, build with people. I got my little happy cow app. You know, what I'm word saying? word. Um, but for real, it's I can pretty much go raw for a couple weeks without thinking twice. Mm -hmm. you know, and Know, rock off uh, you know, just just give me a bag of spinach a couple of apples some water I'm good so <laughs> definitely so you figured out you know yeah, how to do this for sure so, like you know everybody got a grocery store yeah you know? so so you know you, you pick your battles you know, have your lapses and things of that nature but overall you know what your overall goal is mm -hmm. so at the end of the day if it comes time to get, you know get back on your square got to do a little cleanse or something mm -hmm. you know, putting too much bread in your system, you hmm. know, slow down, like, like last, I think a couple weeks ago, I went, like, raw juice, water, juice, raw for five days, mm -hmm. and, you know, felt right as rain. Nice. Like the board, just go back home. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> So, um, one last thing. So, I obviously get the impression from when I caught up with you at the Brother Ali show, yeah, like, last year. That, um, yeah, word, I'm word. Saying, man. Definitely, definitely. That you um, are very capable of, of making dishes. And I remember you said something about, well, in the interview already, about your sweet tooth and mm -hmm. maybe future plans. Like, I don't know. Yep. Okay, yep, go ahead. Yep, maybe, maybe. I'll okay. keep that under wraps until Word, word. Until my my fault, my fault. Nothing before it's time. Nah, I mean, like, the fact of the matter is, you know... When I bake, it's, it's pretty high-end, high-quality stuff. Word. You know, and there's a demand for it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so as long as I don't get too high off my own supply. Okay, got <laughs> you. I can jump in the business. Got you. But uh, it, it's, it's, it's definitely been really, really, because I used to, even before all this happened, I used to say, you know, I make the best pancakes within a six-mile radius of wherever I happen to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that hasn't changed, so. Word. You know, I just put it like that. Dope. Dope. I'm cool. Chef Ray Korn, I'm not Chef, <laughs> Chef <Jay> Lyons. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. Cool. Do you have any last words for folks? Um, yeah, hey, man, just you know, peace to everybody that sparked me. Everybody that I've sparked as far as this whole lifestyle change. Um, it's been for the better. I feel a lot better. And that's that's primarily what it's about, you know, extending your life and uh, and uh, enhancing the value of it. You know, not just living longer but living better. Mm. Um, yeah, man, check me out, realjlive.com. Single out right now, it's called The Fundraiser. Uh, EP and the album coming soon and shit. Word.